Hello, I'm Phil Manson. Welcome to Morning Prayer. In the early days of our ministry, we were between pastorates, trying to make a decision regarding which call to accept. One was to be an associate pastor of a large church of over 500 people with a state-of-the-art sanctuary, paved parking lot, curb appeal, and a livable compensation package. The other was to pastor a small church of about 70 with a gravel parking lot, weeds growing everywhere, a bit of an eyesore, and a bare-bones budget. As we weighed all the pros and cons of each offer, we sought the advice of a veteran pastor. He said, If you don't sense a strong impression from the Lord towards either place, take the one that makes the most sense to your observations. You are called to preach, and you can preach at either place. Well, that's how the Apostle Paul usually moved in his journeys. When he left Antioch to go on his teaching trip, his plan was to revisit all the churches he helped establish on the first trip and encourage them. After he visited all of them, he decided to keep on going, keep traveling west and north to plant more churches. His rationale and motives were right on target. Yet, This was the time when God had a particular place in mind, and he impressed it upon Paul. In Acts 16, 9, we're told during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Paul could preach and plant churches anywhere. But the Lord had a definite strategy in mind that we can only guess at, often in hindsight. Paul knew what God had called him to do, and he was carrying out that mission, and he had others to help him. And the decision wasn't his alone. Sure, Paul had the vision, but as verse 10 tells us, we concluded that God had called us to preach in Macedonia. In other words, he had Silas, Timothy, and Luke to collectively weigh in on the decision. Margaret Thatcher, former English prime minister, said in a Saturday Evening Post article, Ideally, when Christians meet as Christians to take counsel together, their purpose is not, or should not be, to ascertain what is the mind of the majority But what is the mind of the Holy Spirit? Something which may be quite different. 24 years ago, Kathy and I made a decision, combining wise outside counsel from a veteran pastor with the warmth we observed from the church board, and we said yes to the smaller of those two churches. And looking back today, we are so grateful that his divine yes for us included Picknaz. Let's pray together. And so, Father, it's with a heart of thanksgiving that my family blesses and praises you for your leadership in our lives and in the life of our church family here at Pickerington Nazarene. So in the vein of Paul's thanksgiving for the Philippian church, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It's right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in the chains of a COVID pandemic, or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen.